This is a lovely lady. What's your name? Beth is from Halifax. Some of my family are from there. I traveled to there in Canada, not Halifax around the UK, the Canadian one. We copied all your names for shit. We have a clue. <laughs> and then straight away I say, Oh, you're from Halifax? And Beth follows up with, Yes, and a woman from Sarnia tried to have sex with my dad. What? <laughs> I got whiplash from that, Beth. What happened? The hush fills the room. <laughs> His ex, your dad's ex, texted him, and she's from Sarnia, where I'm from? Can you tell me her full name? <laughs> she wears a wig? <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> you should come see my drag act, Auntie Vax. <laughs> she has many wigs. Her first name's Karen. Uh, no. <laughs> so a woman from Sarnia who wears a wig and used to date your dad, Tried to have sex with him in what circumstances? Send him a text, like a saucy text, photos? My mom wasn't home, by the way, so I 
saw Bobby in the bar, I was like, why don't you come back to my mom's house, we'll bang for a laugh, Canadian girls, you know, we don't do the karaoke or the pub quiz, it just all stuff we take at my mom's house. And he came back, and my mother wasn't home, by the way, and my daughter Violet, she was still in the UK because I was working so much, it didn't make sense to bring her on all those flights. And then we were drinking, so I was very loud that evening. It's uncharacteristic of me, but you know, my sister was out there, I was very loud. Yes. And my mom wasn't home, so it was fine. So in the morning, Bobby left to go to work. I went to the kitchen to get some coffee before filming, and that's when I was confronted with the reality that I had forgotten is that my mom's husband's brother lives with them. <laughs> and he was making his own coffee before work. He is a single man in his early 50s. He is a computer systems analyst, exactly the kind of guy who will be listening. <laughs> and he's terrified of me. So I didn't have to say anything to him, but I did want him to tell my mom, so I just gave him a look, you know, just a look, just like, you shut your fucking mouth about this, <laughs> You better not tell my mom, he, I never want to hear about this again, Pete. And off he scurried to work, and I flew back to the UK, and months went by, and I appeared on the Jonathan Ross show. Jonathan Ross and I are friends. He asked me, Catherine, what have you been up to lately? And I said, well, I went back to Canada, I begged my high school boyfriend at my mom's house for a laugh. <laughs> Thank you. About a week later, I get a phone call. It's my mother. She says, Catherine. sitting down with my husband and Pete to watch the Jonathan Ross show. <laughs> Catherine, did you threaten Pete? <laughs> I said, no, mom, no, how dare you? I know Pete's very fragile. I would never threaten Pete. <laughs> Why do you ask? She said, well, I heard you tell the tale on the Jonathan Ross show of banging Bobby at mine, and I said to Pete, Pete, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you tell us about this, Pete? What happened, Pete? And Pete just stared straight ahead, looking horrified. <laughs> he looked very scared, Catherine, so I have to ask you, did you threaten Pete? And that's when I said to myself, Pete, my guy Pete, that's my fucking dude right there. I thought Pete was a total dweeb, but he knows snitches get stitches. <laughs> he kept his mouth shut. <laughs> and in this culture that's flirting with communism, where you're being encouraged to snitch on your neighbor for having a barbecue and tell on this and tell on that. <laughs> and I was going to check it out for about a month. Bobby had a month off work. He just came over. And I had so many things in place for my single life. I had purchased three important things. I purchased a house. Because as Violet gets older, I want to be the place the teenagers come to. I had purchased a German Shepherd police dog puppy because our house was in the sticks and you can't have women living alone without protection, right? Maybe a tough woman can do it. I am not a tough woman. I can't even kill a spider. We needed a police dog. Number three, frozen sperm. <laughs> because if the police dog fell asleep on the job, you just chop jizz at an intruder. <laughs> children, I didn't want a partner at that time, and I was trying to be smart. And when you're buying sperm, it is the weirdest experience of your life. It's a very noble thing to do if you're donating, trying to help grow a family, that's a great thing to do, but the way they lay it out in the catalog sucks. Because the people who work there will write a description, you know, what they feel about the donor, and they always write things like, oh, you know, James always comes in with a friendly smile. I'm like, oh, of course he does. He's about to jerk off for cash. <laughs> don't write that about James. I don't want that to be my child's donor. I don't want a man who's humble, you know, who comes in hanging his head low when he's going to have a wake in an office. <laughs> I don't want him strutting in and be like, hey, what's up, everybody? Can't wait. And then they put pictures of the donors next to their descriptions, but to keep anonymity, they don't put adult pictures of the donors, they put baby photos. <laughs> exactly, and I don't want to buy like a baby sperm. <laughs> I like the cognitive dissonance of it for me, I couldn't separate. I was looking at this baby and I'd be like, Ronald is a 
barista and has big class like this is baby educated. <laughs> but I found some. I found some frozen sperm. I put it on reserve. I had this puppy on reserve. And I thought, we'll just wait on that for a bit. We'll bring Bobby over and we'll see how it goes. So we moved into our new house. Immediately, we were burgled. <laughs> Immediately. We were there for two weeks. Violet was at a sleepover. I was sat in the kitchen. Bobby was cooking pasta. And he decided to go upstairs to get something. And as soon as he went upstairs, I thought, well, he's been gone a minute. And then I hear, bum, 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 just like slamming, stomping, running around. And I didn't feel alarmed at first, because I just thought, all right, he's chasing the cat around to knock the hamster out of her mouth. <laughs> That's a common occurrence in our house. But then I heard Bobby's voice, just I couldn't make out the words. And then I heard another person go, I will fucking kill you. And I thought, the cat's changed. <laughs> and I couldn't really wrap my head around exactly what was happening. So I took my glass of wine and I sort of sauntered toward the front door. I had no shoes on. I dialed 999 on my phone and I didn't hit send. You know when you do that, when you're like, I'll do the first two nines, see what happens. <laughs> I just dialed the nines and then I looked up the stairs to wait for instruction. <laughs> Bobby immediately comes flying down the stairs, no shirt on, and he says to me, there's someone in the house. And then he runs straight past me out the door. <laughs> Well, I spent the entire wardrobe budget on 
about this dress that I have to wear every night. <laughs> thank you. I look like Princess Jasmine. Ooh, that's racist. Thank you. <laughs> it's from Gucci. It's from Gucci. Express 
rascal, he will not take the actual nipple, so that means my nights are twice as long. I feel offended, but otherwise he's fine. Really hurtful. Um, yeah. All right. Pardon? Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I've never been to Perth before today, and I absolutely loved it. I kind of walk around. I saw that long, long-ass river that you have. Congratulations for that. Put a little lock on there. Um, you're so kind. Thank you for supporting my comedy. Thank you to the crew.